This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome back to Energy Wednesday. <laughs> and as we start this program, well, I want to introduce co-host Veronica Rocha. Thank and you. She's our terrific co-host on renewable energy <laughs> technologies for this month. Thank you. And we have Rachel here from Hawaii Energy Thank today, you. Rachel Fukunmoto, Energy Advisor. So we have a megawatt moment. Yes. And what are we going to learn today? Well, it's always exciting to be here. Yes, <laughs> nice to have you. But yeah, today is all about apartments and condos and really how to help them start, be, start seeing condos and apartments as businesses. That's great. Yeah, and so we actually held a really great lunch and learn last week. And so we had a bunch of our condo owners, um, property managers, you know, all of the decision makers, we brought them together and um, was able to, oh, you know, wow. provide them with information. So these are all the big condos, especially, that have 300 units or more, where they use a lot of energy. Yeah, it was a yeah. wide range, actually. So the very large condos, um, we had some of the luxury condos, um, they, oh. they came by, but anywhere from even three-story walk-ups, too. Okay, well, uh, do you have a video to tell we us? We do have <laughs> a video. Okay. Let's see the video first, and then we'll question you about sure, it. Sure thing. Oh. <laughs> nice. have a pretty aggressive goal of reaching 100% clean energy by the year 2045. And so we strongly believe that um, a large portion of that will be attributed to um, energy efficiency. I do know that a lot of you have participated in lighting programs before. Um, and so please feel free to share this with any of your, your friends. If you have other resident managers, general managers that might be interested or even walking around seeing um, outdated lighting in properties, feel free to share this information with them. It's applicable to, to everybody. There have been studies that, that uh, show CFLs emit radiation. Yeah. But the LEDs, you're not going to have that. There's no UV, no infrared. So better without or with, with ballots. It would take you know, one of us to go through to a walkthrough with you gather what it is that you're trying to accomplish and looking at the best picture going forward in the long term. You know, we're really here to try and support you folks um, and make it as easy as possible. Um, as an energy advisor, that's, that's really my role is to um, guide you to, you know, the contractors that participate with us, um, provide quality products and, um, you know, on my end, really help you uh, save energy. So, tell us the questions that they asked you and what, what you had to tell them about the kinds of things the Energy Advisor does for yeah. condos. Yeah, so especially for condos in the common areas, it's really important to focus on lighting. Um, just their hours of operation are a lot uh, longer than if you were in unit. And so it makes a huge difference if you're installing LEDs, more efficient lighting. And so we really wanted to provide them with kind of a workshop to meet some of our contractors, clean energy allies, really ask any questions that they wanted to. And so that was kind of what you saw in the clip. So you right usually there. give incentives, you give some kind of rebates or what, exactly. what kinds cash of cash incentives. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us what the incentives are. Yeah, so it depends on the lighting that they install, but really we're trying to help um, provide these cash incentives so it makes the deal a little bit sweeter to purchase lights that are typically more expensive, um, especially LEDs, and so really level the playing field for that. So like I live in a condo, it's 306 units, mm -hmm. and we have two buildings, and we have, um, I'd say, quite a bit of common area, you know, the lobbies and then the, 
the elevators going up and down and the, the boilers and whatever is in the, the innards of the building. Right. Um, so what, what else do you do? Is it just all the lighting or are there other kinds of things? Oh, like, we do you know, everything. So you go in and you actually do an audit for the building? What, so what do you do? So I'll, I'll help the, the property manager or even the board members um, just do a quick walkthrough, assess what the potential is. And so anything to do with mechanics, oh, so really? especially mm. if you have a pool at your yes, place. Yes, we do here. have a pool. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So we can take a look at the pumps, oh. just really make them more efficient. So this is free? Um, so what I do, yep, it's included. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, once we decide what the potential is, then I really guide the decision makers to contractors, um, to trusted clean energy allies, and they'll do the work for you. And I work with them to be able to provide the rebate after that. So tell the viewers where they can get this free good <laughs> service. <laughs> well, visit www.hawaiienergy.com. Um, look for my face on our <laughs> About Me section. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I take care of all apartments, condos, multifamily um, properties. Terrific. And so just give me a call. Okay, great. And this program started already or you're still in training or what? what no, so I, I've been doing this, this for, for a couple of years oh! now. <laughs> so, oh, so what have you done that's new that you're, you're going <laughs> to give us? <laughs> Well, you know, all of our incentives are, you know, brand new. So okay. we we just like to be able to help our, our That's customers great. and rate payers. Because we have a lot of condos, a lot of apartments in in the state, especially in Honolulu. Yes, right it's now. great to take advantage of, of the resources that we have. Well, very good. Thank you, Hawaii Energy, yes, once again. So and I know Veronica has questions. I for do, me. actually. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions. So uh, when you're talking to condo owners, et cetera, what are like some of their biggest concerns and how, what would you say to them to address those concerns? Right, so really with condos, um, it's all about your reserves, mm -hmm. you know, to make capital improvements. And so energy efficiency is typically pretty low on the list. Um, but what we like to do is mm -hmm. help them see that energy efficiency actually funds projects for them. So if they have, you know, water heaters that break or need a new booster yeah. pump, chiller mm -hmm. systems, if they're doing energy efficiency at the same time, it's cash flow back mm -hmm. into their pockets. And so we like to sell mm -hmm. energy efficiency as something to make their condo owners happy, you know, their tenants happy, the board members That's happy. Good. Um, so you, you help them um, in terms of what kinds of products, I guess Energy Star, whatever you call it, is that also available with boilers or you know some of the bigger equipment? Yeah, so yeah. we have a list, it's all on our website, um, but really just to make sure that you're following the correct energy efficiency standards. Mm -hmm. And so we only incentivize really quality products mm -hmm. to make sure that it lasts for the customers, make sure that they're satisfied with, um, with the materials. Yeah, very good. So I do have another question. Mm -hmm. um, so I was mentioning earlier before the show that uh, this summer I was in Armenia working on a, a work-related project, but I had an awesome opportunity to meet with Habitat for Humanity in Armenia and that they do uh, a lot of energy efficiency and renewable energy projects within their Habitat for Humanity uh, you know, projects. So I understand Hawaii Energy also does similar work here locally in Hawaii. So I wanted to you know, just ask you, what are the sort of projects that you guys do and uh, what are the sort of things that we should be uh, in the lookout for? Yeah, so what's really neat is that we have programs that are designed to reach these hard to reach mm -hmm. segments. So um, community housing, we have a lot of free programs for them. Um, it's through our Energy Smart for Homes program. Mm. So we'll go in, um, you know, get them signed up and scheduled, yeah. but we'll pretty much install LED lighting, faucet awesome. aerators, high efficiency mm. shower heads, all free. Free? Oh, yes. wow. So we That's cover huge. the cost of yeah. that, and it really makes a difference. Tenants will see their energy use drop. So that one, you go into the units. It's not the common we units. Do. It's every unit? Yes, Whoa, every that's unit. Good. And so, um, yeah, that's that's available, too, through through our program. Um, so how do you qualify for that? I mean, what would yeah. be the kind of housing That's a great that question. Yeah. yeah, so typically we look for um, single-owned buildings. Uh, it's a lot easier just in terms of getting into the units and scheduling, but um, 
anybody can apply if you live mm. in a multifamily property. It's just a matter of scheduling with us. And so we like to have at least 10 to 15 units um, that uh, would commit mm -hmm. to, to having us you know, enter their their. So does it have to be low income or is it anybody? Um, actually, I believe it's anybody. Oh. Um, we we like to serve the low income first, um, just so while it's we have a, is it part of your hard to reach um, program, or is it? It is. E yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And so you know, we we don't like to exclude anybody, but just with the idea that this program is for for lower income, for hard to reach senior okay. housing, and so we. We like to serve them first. That's wonderful. That's, That's a great, great program. Good program. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to summarize for us? Quick summary <laughs> today. We had Rachel. She's amazing. Works for Hawaii Energy. Provides a lot of education uh, for condominiums and, and other residential uh, buildings. Um, they also Hawaii Energy provides a lot of rebates, and they also have special programs for uh, you know harder to reach communities. So if you're interested, Rachel, please tell us who um, you know they ought to contact and what uh, how to get a hold of you guys yeah so please please visit our website www.hawaiienergy.com and all of our contact information is there awesome thanks for being with us today Rachel aloha thank you Hawaii Energy <laughs> <laughs> thank you Rachel thank you so much okay come back again oh, tell us do. new programs <laughs> okay bye aloha This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Oh. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Okay. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Oh. Is it an idea? Okay. The dive heart will be and then, and then you can ask the question. Uh, you, so you can, you can, you can God actually. Wants to help you the okay, Bob. Can you hear me? Since Bob. 2001, dive heart has helped can he hear me? Hi, Bob. Can, this is Hi, Bob. Veronica. Can you hear us? Have never gone before. Can he hear us? Dive heart has helped He's them not responding. To their new normal. Search dive.org and share our mission with others. Okay. And in the process, Hi, Bob. Of all abilities, imagine the possibilities in their lives. We're back again, Hawaii Energy Policy Think Tech uh, program with uh, my co-host, Veronica Rocha. Hello, Sharon. Hello, we're back, we're <laughs> back. And Veronica has this series on renewable energy this month, and uh, she has the biofuels yes. to discuss this yes. month. So do you want to take it away with Bob? Bob, yeah. are you there? We're having Bob from Pacific Biodiesel as Technologies as our special guest today, and he's Skyping in from Maui. Aloha, Bob. Can you hear us? Hello, Bob. All right. Well, okay. as we get Bob all set <laughs> up here, let's talk a little bit about today's show. Okay. okay. So today's show is titled Talk Story with Bob King from Pacific Biodiesel. Of course, Bob and his wife, Kelly, are the founders of Pacific Biodiesel. They have been very successful in uh, their work in uh, biofuels. So I hear, Sharon, yes. that they just 
just uh, obtained a very prestigious award from Hawaii Energy Policy Forum on it's one of their transformational awards That's as, right. as a representative of Hawaii Energy Policy Forum or HEPF can you tell us a little bit about this award I Sharon sh I sure can we're very pleased that we could give Bob and Kelly King uh, the specific and Pacific Biodiesel Technologies, mm -hmm. the the uh, award for the intersection of sectors. That is, they worked with the uh, military on a project. It was a soils to fuel. Hi, Bob. Can you hey, hear Bob. us now? I was just telling Hello? you about the award that you got okay. from Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. We're so pleased with your yes. work on getting soil to fuels projects with the Department of Defense, the Army. And you could tell us a little bit about that and where it's gone from that with all of the work you're doing and new developments. So, Kelly, take it away. No, what? Veronica, oh, take I it away. Was I actually, <laughs> <laughs> Veronica. No, I actually, no, I think that's a, <laughs> have a new name all of a sudden. Veronica. Don't worry, I know your wife is a replaced. Okay, Bob, so tell, Bob. Us. Yeah. tell us about Can you tell us about first? your work? Mm. Oh, well, uh, can you hear me okay yes, now? Yes, we can. We can see okay, you, too. Good. Very nice. Um, yeah, the, the uh, military biofuel crop project was um, was just trying to get started with how are we going to grow some energy here in the islands. And so uh, one of the parameters the military wanted was something quick. So what's, you know, not, not, not something that takes a decade, but when mm -hmm. they pull the trigger on this, how literally <laughs> yeah. how long till it get, yeah, till yeah. get oil fuel. so we had uh, soil to oil in 100 days so 100 wow, day crops quick something. turn crops something we can put in the ground harvest soon three months and and put some more uh, fuel into the infrastructure here on the islands and was the fuel that you developed is that ready like jet fuel ready or what was it um, that came out of that and where would that be going how would you use well, it? Well, it's interesting. Technically, you could, you could put this in a jet engine. We, we run a lot of it in jet and combustion turbines for Hawaiian Electric. Uh, it also runs in helicopters and other things. But unless it's an emergency, it would be for terrestrial equipment. So uh, trucks, buses, mm -hmm. power generation, um, uh, military base use, basically. Mm -hmm. So. Get, get some fuel onto the base to uh, run run the the, the backside of, of operations for the military. And how much are we talking about in terms of production? Uh, for quantity? Yes. Well, um, the, you know, obviously the more the better for them. Yes. But um, we're right now, um, today we're making about uh, 6 million gallons a year. So the, the plant on the Big Island is at design capacity. Um, we didn't have that plant when we first started this um, military project. Um, so we, you know, with the interest in, in ag fuels, we actually went from a two and a half million gallon a year plant design to a five and a half million gallon a year plant design, uh, thinking that we'd get some, some of these crops coming in. Well, we're, we're already at six with the plant and um, it's running very nicely. Uh, that's about the equivalent of about 10% of all the on-road diesel used in the state of Hawaii, not for everybody, not just the military. Well, but where it would go, well, you know, during during a crisis, uh, who knows? But um, it's, you have um, supplied the the company, electrical company, with uh, fuel during times of crisis, wasn't it? During the disaster, I, I, as I recall. Uh, previously, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, yeah, it is one of the one of the interesting things is that we can because we're in the islands uh, and we've got a lot of things moving in the islands. When uh, a, a, a while back, when there was a couple of the big power plants went offline and they had to run the biodiesel generator a lot, like basically 24 hours a day, um, we pulled everything that we had in the state together mm -hmm. and sent it all over there. And within two or three days, we had put a significant amount of fuel in their tank, enough to make it through that crisis without going into rolling blackouts. So uh, transparent to everybody else, but the utility was really scrambling to, mm -hmm. to keep the lights on, which they were successful at. 
Um, had it been coming from the mainland six weeks away, it wouldn't have happened. That's a huge success, Bob. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about your project with, and I believe this was with specifically the Army, a um, hundred days to go from crop to field. What were some of the major challenges that you confronted? And then also, how did you overcome that? I mean, that's a huge success. Well, w one of the things we realized is that in order to, to do this at scale, we have a lot of learning to do in Hawaii. And on the mainland, of course, they, this is, they, they've been doing this all, a long time and it's, it's nothing new. But um, the seed companies that we talked to, the irrigation companies uh, that we talked to, they're, they're like, they, they were first start off was, oh yeah, we got this, we got this, you know, no problem. And then we tell them about our conditions, our weather, our mm. insects, our, our, and everything in there. They got very silent and it's like, wow, <laughs> there's a lot to figure out here. Um, they didn't know. They didn't know what varieties would work. They didn't know what watering regimens or or even equipment type we would uh, we would need. So, um, and then all the different microclimates we have in Hawaii. So, does does every crop work in every one? Which is mm. no, uh, but which crops work in which microclimates? A lot of learning, which is exciting. That's yeah. I, I love that. It's just there's so much to learn and so much to to understand. But you know, I we've always wanted to make sure that we did that at a small scale so that the mistakes were manageable um, and not tremendous. So you've tested the different feedstocks. So what what have you found with the, whatever the microclimate is, the Big Island, Maui. Uh, there there different crops that you found to be more successful in terms of the yield, um, you know, cost? Yeah, there's, there, there's, everything's got a place, but the ones that we think are, are going to go to scale soonest are crops like sunflower, mm -hmm. uh, safflower, uh, the um, camelina, hemp if we could ever grow it. Um, these are crops that can be um, mechanized, uh, planted, and harvested. And we're kind of a machinery company, so we're all process and machinery geeks. So that's our th that's our area. That's where we're going, and and that's At you know we can put in a lot of acres quickly. Visited you way back. I think you had jatropha, or you you had some other prop, um, crops. Were they not as successful as sunflower, for example? Well, the jatropha was was challenging on a couple of rounds. One is that it takes a long time to get it going, mm. you know, years, several years to get the trees up and, and and making money for you. So you have to you have to pile a lot of cash into it, mm. and those early years are are very expensive, trying to get the trees up up away from the weeds. Mm. And and then the thing about jatropha that we couldn't solve yet is how to detoxify the meal to make it another product because sunflower, safflower, the other ones that we're looking at, the meal, after we press the oil, the meal is very valuable for yes, animal I feed and, and supports an entire new industry. So um, with Jatropha, you know, it's toxic. There's really, there's not another, another add on use for it. So it has to make all the money off the oil and that's difficult. So Pacific Biodiesel has been really busy lately from what I could tell from your website. I read things about the sunflower operation in Maui, which we talked about with the Army. You guys have a new crushing mill. You talked about the increased production in the uh, Big Island production plant. So Bob, tell us what's next. The, what, what do you guys want to do in your next stage? Um, well, we, we have lots of ideas. Yeah. My, <laughs> so my share, I want a lot of sherry lies is what you say. <laughs> Cooking out there. But, you can say uh, generically. You know, it's, it's hard to, we, we also have to focus. We're, yes. we're trying to pick out, you know, learn, learn a little bit and pick out some things that we can get success at. And, and, you know, these days with the federal government where it's at, um, getting grant monies, is is very difficult so um we you know we've we've moved some of these really r d you know cutting edge pieces forward with grant monies 
so that we can continue our regular operations. So when we have to do all of these new projects from actual cash flow from from uh, normal operations, it definitely slows us down. Uh, it won't stop us, but it'll slow us down. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we've got there's there's just so many things things to do out there, and um, we you know the sunflower project. Uh, project on Maui, for for instance, was just, um, it was a bit overwhelming, the, the response from the community. We really didn't expect mm -hmm. that, but there was, you know, 50, 60,000 people walked around in our field and really? smiles oh, on their face, oh, everybody taking awesome. pictures. Oh, uh, um, they just hadn't seen anything like it on Maui. Oh, and, uh, it was really, really inspiring to, uh, to, to us out there farming, you know, to go, oh, wow, there's, people are really interested in, in what's going on, and that's, it's a beautiful flower. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what but, kind of support do you think, if, if we're not getting in the federal level, what, is there something on the state level? What, what kinds of uh, policies or support do you think may push you to, you know, at least keep on going forward? Uh, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways that there can be support in the state, and and we feel fortunate to be in Hawaii, where we do have a state mandate to to go 100% renewable. It's it's very important. Um, we don't have some of the cash incentives that other states have. California, uh, when when our uh, the companies sell you know, other companies sell fuel into California, it's um, they get a low carbon fuel standard credit that they sell and it's significant it's a very very big deal and and keeps a lot of businesses um, moving forward and expanding uh, Oregon also has this uh, Washington will have it soon um, this mandate is great but it's way out there so we you know how do we get from here to there so we have is, about is one minute, challenge. Bob so I don't want to cut you off but if you want to give one last pitch oh. yeah to the state <laughs> and what we can do to help support you moving forward you've got it well yeah it's um uh, i think continuing to use the fuel everywhere we can uh, state dot is trying to get there um and uh puc is kind of going the opposite way now they're pulling back on biodiesel um so we'll have less usage in the future uh but um it's it, it all varies and, and we just appreciate all the support that we get from, from all the places that we get it. And um, yeah, and we're, we're committed to, to going as fast as we economically can keep our keep it all going. So it's a, it's a great place to be. We appreciate the work that you're doing and we really do appreciate your coming on to our show to end our series on renewables and renewable fuels, which is what you're helping us do for Hawaii. You know, before we go, Sharon, I, I do want to uh, acknowledge um, this uh, documentary, uh, Revolution Green. Um, Bob, can you just tell us a little bit about this documentary? I understand that you were one of the people that really inspired uh, this documentary story. And uh, tell us how did it come about? And uh, if people were to watch it, what are the some uh, of the things that you would want them to take away. Well, let's see. The quick version of that is that this this uh, a couple of um, producers and editors in Hollywood were going to do a movie on renewable energy, and after they came and talked to us or found you know start seeing what was going on, they said, "Well, we're not going to do it on everything. We're going to do it on just your company." That's amazing. So, wow. so we said, "Congratulations!" Wonderful. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we we had. A, you know, we got them hooked up with Willie Nelson, Woody Harrelson, and some of the other supporters that kept us going mm -hmm. in those days. And um, they just, on their own, went around and, and did all this filming and put it together. It's a really nice story of, of kind of the hope, you know, the, the dream, you know, that there is another way. Um, mm -hmm. It's not doom and gloom when you look at the, the future of energy. It was, um, so that, that was... That was what, what they were getting out of our story, and uh, it was yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah, and thank you. So there's not doom and gloom. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes. doom and gloom, positive. We're Absolutely. 
Hey, you know, I haven't seen it because I just learned about it when I was looking at your website. But I have to tell you, I'm really excited. And maybe we can yeah. do some fun special screening, screening for folks here in Oahu, Sharon. Yes, maybe we can set that up, idea. right? Yeah, we could dig it up. And Bob, you could come here and tell us the story from the start. I think the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the editor, the, the producer of that show, uh, Stephen Strout, I, I, I believe is coming over to Maui in the next... Um, um, I should know the, the date <laughs> soon, the next few weeks, oh. uh, because it's actually the 10th anniversary of, of the release of that. So really? he's uh, he wants to come over and just kind of talk to us and, and oh, then there's catch a sequel. up on things. A sequel so, yeah. is coming. <laughs> it'll be fun. Okay, thanks, thanks so you, Bob. much, Bob. Thanks. Congratulations on all your uh, great work. All right, thank, thank you, and thanks for having me on today. Oh, thank you. Thank Bye-bye. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.